Welcome to the Pewsey Vell here in Wiltshire. My name is Paul Oakley and I run Pewsey Vell Studios where we teach oil painting courses and provide demonstrations to art groups. Like all of us I'm in lockdown at the moment so I thought this was the ideal time to start filming some demonstrations. This is my first one so please excuse any hiccups. If you're interested in seeing further demonstrations please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. This demonstration is a still life of some daffodils and a blue espresso cup and saucer. It's a relatively simple painting, so ideal for somebody new to oil painting or returning, or just fun if you fancy uh, a bright and cheerful picture to lighten up the moment in this, these difficult times. The film will take you stage by stage in how to paint the picture. It's quite a distinctive style with outlines and blocks of colour, similar to those used by Cezanne. If the technology works, you should see a picture of the finished painting next, followed by the demonstration. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, to get us started, we're going to put a colour beginning down on the board um, to give us a first layer of colour and get, um, get a, a blue background for our picture or a starting blue background. So this is the first bit I'm going to have to do off camera because it's going to get too messy and runny otherwise. So what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of my low odour mineral spirit mixed on a palette next to me and I'm just going to take a little bit of the cerulean blue and mix that to a nice thin mix, a tiny touch of raw sienna just to take the edge off that blue. I'm just going to mix this down to really thin, washy, slightly bluey brown colour, which I'm going to cover the whole board with. Now, obviously the reason I can't do that on the, on the screen is that it's going to run all off my palette. So, so we, we've got this, uh, I've got a, a varnish brush here, but any thick brush will do. I'm not too worried about making neat brush strokes. I just want to put uh, a layer of initial blue down all over the board. Just to, just to get us started off and um, cover up that, that white start that we've got. Now in terms of what we're using today, this is um, some 4mm MDF and that's got a layer of acrylic gesso on there, fairly thin because you, and you can see already how quickly that board's soaking up the paint. Um, even though it's oil paint which you think might take a long time to dry, as soon as I finish this it's pretty much ready to go with our, for our next stage. So if you look it's, it's pretty much dry already. So that's soaking up the paint. So um, we're using this board, for, in terms of colours, we're using uh, cerulean blue, some French ultramarine, uh, cadmium red, some burnt umber, raw sienna, cadmium yellow and titanium white. So I've got the initials next to the colour if you're not sure. If you haven't got those colours, it doesn't matter too much. Just uh, the idea today is just get, it, get us painting, um, get us started with some oil painting. And uh, so if, the, if you haven't got the exactly right colours, that doesn't matter. Um, just use the ones you've got. If you're not used to oil painting, you could also do this with acrylic. Um, I'm using some mineral spirits just to thin down my paint, but you could, you could use water with acrylics if you wanted to. Right, the next stage is to just to, to draw up our design. Now I'm gonna drop in a, a copy of the finished picture now that you can have a look at. You can either copy this, or if you're doing your own version of it, that's absolutely fine. For the next stage of my painting, I'm going to outline uh, the whole picture. I've got it drawn out now in front of me. So um, I want to get an effect like a, a Cezanne picture. And if you look at some of Cezanne's pictures, a lot of them had an outline around some of the, um, the fruit and the, the jars and the, the um, vases that he had in his painting. So it's quite a distinctive style um, with some quite blocked in colors. And that's the, the, um, the design we're looking to achieve today. So with a little bit of my mineral spirits, I'm just gonna Grab some burnt umber and a little bit of French ultramarine. I'm going to just mix this down to a bit of a thinner consistency, almost a bit like ink, not quite so thin as that, so that I can use this to, to outline, outline my drawing. So I've got a, quite a thin little brush here. I'm just going to start at the top and then quite quickly pop in the outline of the, each of the petals and just get an idea of the, the, the framework of the picture where everything sits. Now, some of these lines are going to get covered up as we go through the painting, but some will stay and some we're going to pop back on later on to get that sort of distinctive Cezanne look. So I'm just really letting the brush follow around the outside of the flowers. Um, not spending too long about this because I want it to look, look like a fairly loose picture. 
Uh, not every little detail, we're going to have some different colours in, inside these daffodils. Um, but I just want to get, get an idea of where everything is, um, get that onto the picture. So this, this is the, f the second stage of, stage of the picture. We've got the, um, the background done and we've got our drawing done. So this is the first real bit of painting we're starting to do, just to get an idea of where everything is in our picture. So just get these stalks in. Stalk for that one. I'm not too worried about all the stalks and all the leaves being exactly right. Just want an idea of some daffodils growing out of this terracotta jug. Just makes up a bit more colour. These lines are going to dry pretty quickly, they're probably starting to dry already. Bit of an odd leaf there. Let's just do this last staff. And because they're drying so quickly, that's because we've got this acrylic gesso on, we've got an MDF board, so it's all very absorbent. And just means that we can, we can get an oil painting done in probably an hour and a half, something like that. Maybe even less. Let's see how we get on. As I said before, if you're doing this in, in acrylics, that would be fine. You could use the same colours um, and you could, you could be using your uh, water to thin down your, your paint. So I'm using a low odour mineral spirit, um, but you could be using terps or something thinner, similar to that, whatever you normally use to, to thin down your, your oil paints. So that's the flowers done. Let's just get the, let's just get the, um, the jug and the, the cup done. And this is the tricky top of the jug, try and get that looking about right. And we're coming out the back. So it needs to go out a little bit more, I think, just there. You've got the saucer underneath the cup. This cup's got quite an unusual design in that it's a bit, a bit flatter at the top and then more rounded underneath. So we're just going to just give an idea of how that works. Just going to put an idea of where the, where the shadows are. Underneath there. I'm just going to switch across to a slightly thicker brush. It's a smaller flat brush. And then with the same colours, I'm just going to mix up a little bit more of this thinner paint and just start to put, put some of the shadows in. Just to, again, get a bit of, more of an idea of how my paintings work and, and, and the framework of it so I can get my values right as I move across the picture. So frame the uh, shadow of the jug, bit of a shadow underneath. The light's obviously coming from the left-hand side, so underneath and around the back of the saucer. And then in there. I'm not going to worry too much about my daffodils, but I just want to obviously have a bit of shadow on the, the right-hand side of the jug where the, the light's not falling on it quite so much. And that means that 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 blue cup's going to stand out a bit more, and then obviously this shadow's going to thin a bit more as it comes across, as the light's hitting the left-hand side, and again, a bit of shadow on the, the left-hand side of the cup. There we go. Just a bit in behind the flowers. Right, first bit of the painting we're going to do, we're going to start to put in, put in the background. Now, uh, I want this to look quite like a distressed wall, so a wall that's the plaster's peeling off a bit, a bit in need of some paint, a bit in need of some TLC. So I want this to, to not be painted too neatly, I want it to look like it's, it's old and, 
um, in need of some need of some refreshment. So we're going to have to start off with a bit of um, French ultramarine, a little bit of raw sienna, and then we're going to add some white to that to get a nice sort of just a, a knockback blue a bit, just with a little hint of brown within that. And what I'm going to do is, as I go across the wall, I'm going to mix in um, different amounts of blue and brown and white, just to get an idea of um, how it's crumbling away, how there's no uniformity in the colour, and, um, and how that uh, this wall's looking a bit beyond its best. I'm going to just use a, a vertical brush stroke. No medium with this, just, just the paint as it comes out, because I want it to be quite thick. You've seen why we've got this colour in behind now, so with this uh, slightly different bluey brown colour, we can leave little areas of paint showing and it will just add to this effect of an old wall with perhaps lots of layers of paint, a bit of plaster coming off. You see I'm just adding a bit more blue to the mix. And I'm just scrubbing that on with my brush in a nice strong downward, downward motion. So a little bit more of the raw sienna in there. Now I just need to be relatively careful going around my, my objects, but if it goes over the lines a little bit, the boundary lines, that's, that's absolutely fine because we can, we can fill those in later on. So as I say, just mixing different amount, amounts of colours as I go across so that the wall's not uniform in colour. And what we can do is, when we get to the end of the painting, if we want to make the wall look a bit more interesting or it's a bit too light or a bit too dark, then because we've got such an absorbent board, it's going to be okay to okay to, to do that later on. You can already see we can just add add bits more of paint to it just to to give that idea of this distressed wall. So just carrying on around my daffodils. Get those in place. Now obviously I can't go vertically around all of these, so what I'm doing is put the, put the paint on and then just maybe add in some vertical lines once I've got the, the colour reasonably around the, the daffodil flowers. And again, just, just scrubbing that colour in. Um, maybe just put a bit more brown in here so you've got some, some change. What I'm, what I'm looking for is a quite a sort of bluey brown colour, which is these bright yellow daffodils are going to stand out again when we start to put some, put some colour into them. So you can see, because the paint's quite thin and I'm scrubbing it on, you can, you can add more paint to it as you go along. A bit darker over here. So let's get a bit more paint mixed up so we can just fill in this left-hand side. So some big, bold brush strokes. I'm definitely not looking to thin this or blend it at all. I want you to almost see every brushstroke as it goes on, um, just to get this idea of a, an old wall. So a bit darker over this side, so maybe just add a little bit of light, like some plaster coming off maybe. And I'm just pushing this around the outside of the jug. Pop it in, the, in next to the handle again. I'm not too worried if I go over those lines because I can just fill those in at the end. So some are show through and others like this, I just need to, to get a bit of background onto the wall. Uh, so it's more important I don't leave too many gaps around the outside that I might have to fill in later on. Just have a bit more raw sienna in that mix. Just going in, in, amongst the, in amongst the daffodils. And it's a bit more tricky in here, but, but try and keep, you can use a slightly smaller brush if you want to, but. I'd rather just sort of scrub it on and get the paint colour in than have lots of little delicate brushes and lose that, that life and vibrancy about that back wall looking all scruffy and old. And what you can do is if you just want to add some extra colour to it, just a few big bold brush strokes, that's with a bit of um, white and raw sienna. Or you could add a bit more blue to it perhaps if you wanted to. Bit of stronger blue, maybe. Let's mix that a bit better. Maybe a layer of blue paint that's come off in the past. That's a bit more needed in in this space here. 
So there we are. For, I think that's pretty much done for the, the, the back wall. We can come back to that later on if we need to, just to just to tidy it up. But I don't want it to look too too tidy, so we might just leave it like that. Let's just see how the painting how the painting goes. Always like to have a look at the painting right at the end. See if I think there's anything that's missing or needs tidying up. And that's the time to do it, rather than worry too much at this stage about how everything's looking in too much detail. So the last thing I want to do at this stage is to get the, the tablecloth in. Um, so this is going to be the same colours. So it's going to be some white, more of a white colour with um, some of my ultramarine. And I just want to, to really, maybe a bit more white than that, to really put it in loosely. Um, like it's a ruffled tablecloth. I'm not going to go over the shadows, well, not too much. Um, so I want a mix of blue and white. Just popping that in with some really big, bold brush strokes so it looks like a, a crumpled tablecloth, one that nobody's really worried about smoothing out or doing too much with. Again, very much in the style of Suzanne. You always have a tablecloth or a napkin there and very often that would be rumpled up or scruffy or put in position so you could it could best show off the, the fruit or the jug or whatever else he was painting. So just that get on that roughly, just an idea of the tablecloth. We're going to come back with some more colour over that later on. And there I think we're just about finished on stage two. So the next stage we'll be getting on with the painting in the jug and the cup and then starting on the flowers after that. For the next part of the picture we're going to fill in the colour of the jug and also the little espresso cup and its saucer. So for the, we're going to start with the jug, so I'm going to use, I want a nice terracotta colour, so I'm going to use some raw sienna, a little bit of cad red just to warm it up a bit, and some white, just a bit more raw sienna I think just to get that nice terracotta colour. Now I'm going to start with the the left hand side, so that's the side with the, the light coming towards me. And I want the brush strokes to really try and follow the outside shape of the jug and the way it curls out towards you. So they're gonna I'm gonna just have a single brush stroke if I can and just let that follow around the curve of the jug. Going up to that line on the edge but not maybe across it, just down to the bottom and then just carry on doing the same thing round. The lightest bits in that central area where the where the light's really hitting it so it's just going to be slightly lighter and then just taking that across maybe a bit more raw sienna as we go further across because the light's coming mainly from the left hand side so we start to get starting to get towards the shadow area going up to where we've got the saucer try not to go too much across it I'm just going to start to introduce a bit of the burnt amber that looks like it's trying to escape from our palette just to, to go over the shadow area. So it's starting to get darker, so just blending that a little bit. Let's go across. I want a nice dark area behind this cup so it's really going to stand out. So just thin that in a bit with the, the lighter colour. And then I'm going to take that darker colour right across. Still quite a warm colour because we've got the burnt amber, a reddy brown, and then a bit more of that. And then we're just, again we're just following that line of the of the jug around. And then down to the down to the cup. So I'll probably come back and tidy that up later, but that's that's the jug pretty much done. Just a bit more shade in there perhaps. So it stands out against the stands out against the cup. So just give the brush a clean. The other thing I want to do on the jug at this stage is look at the handle, and then uh, we've got this white lip, a creamy lip across the top of the jug. So I'm going to pop that in. So what I've got my my raw sienna mix uh, as before, a little tiny touch of cad red and some white. Just going to touch, thin that down a bit there, so it's looking more like it's coming towards me. And then we're just going to pop in, pop in the handle. Might just go for a smaller brush. So this is my number two flat brush. Again, same mix of colours. A bit more raw centre, I think. 
And I'm just going to pop this handle in. Again, trying to keep it between the lines, but I'm not too worried if we need to go back over those at a later date. I'm also going to put some shadow in later on that handle just to, to give it a bit of emphasis to it. It looks like it's a, a rounded handle. That's sort of going into the jug beyond where we can actually see it. So where I've got this colour, I'm just going to pop a little bit. There's not many places where the back of the jug can be seen through the leaves, but I'm just going to pop a couple of bits in. And then maybe at the bottom where I want that to be in shadow, where the leaves go into the jug. And then I'm just going to um, mix up some, again using some raw sienna, but with some white this time. Uh, just to give an idea of this cream lip around the top of the jug. So start with the white, a little bit of raw sienna, a nice creamy colour. And I'm just going to use the brush just almost just to, to follow that, that lip around as carefully as I can. Around there. And then it just goes around the back. comes into the top of the handle. So just get some idea of that, that going on there. I'm just going to add a little bit more of my raw sienna as we go around the front of the jug because obviously this is the bit that's that's more in shadow and then we're going to just pop the, the lip of the, of the jug in without too much detail at this stage just to get an idea of where it is. So we're going to come back and tidy up bits of the jug and uh, the cup when that's painted in a bit more detail later on. I just want to get the basic framework of them down. So we've got the jug in place, so we're now going to have a look at the cup. Now I've got this nice creamy colour. I'm going to use that for, for the inside of the cup. So again, not wearing too much if I go over the lines, just get that, get that inside the, the cup. I get that back bit a bit tidier. Just use a slightly smaller brush just to get that neatened up. Then we've got an area at the front where there's more uh, the shadow on in the inside of the cup. So I'm just going to use a bit of raw sienna just to give an idea of that, that being in, in shade. So not too much detail at this stage. Just a sort of almost a coffee colour just to give an idea of some shadow for the inside of the cup. Now for the cup itself we're going to be using some cerulean blue. So I'm going to start off with a bit of that. A little bit of white. A little tiny bit of raw sienna because I don't want it too bright at this stage. You can just see that just takes the edge off the, the blue a little bit. A bit more white. And we're just going to start to put this on. I'm going to start putting it on with the saucer just to see if I like the colour. Yeah, that's not too bad. I want it quite nice and bright, but this is sort of a bit of a mid-range cut at the moment because we're going to go, go lighter, so just filling in the saucer. And then that sort of mid-tone bit of the cup, so the bit that's not too light, not too dark at this stage. Just following the shape of the cup round a bit. And I'm going to add, add a bit of white to that. So I want to do the left hand, paint the left hand side where that's catching the sun. I'm trying to try, try and get a quite a crisp edge on this left hand side because I really want that to stand out against the, the jug behind. And again down here where it's a slightly unusual shape. And I'm just using my brush to almost just follow the shape of the cup round just to get an idea that 
it's got that rounded shape, just blending that across into the, the slightly darker areas. And then when we go darker, I'm just going to add a little bit of um, raw sienna to my cerulean blue, just to darken that down a bit more, because that, that's going to be my, my shadow area. So we're just going to pop that in, pop that in there onto the darker side of the cup. I'm just going to use that colour just to start to give an idea of this handle. Again, I might just use my thinner brush to do that. There we go. And then, uh, as we've got this darker colour, just fill in some of this shadow of the, of the cup in the saucer. We need a bit more of the sienna, I think. We can come back to this later if we need to emphasize it, which I think we might. So that's got the basis of the, the jug and the cup in place. So now it's time to start on the daffodils. For the daffodils, I want to start off with doing the areas that are, are most in shadow. So generally the right hand side daffodils, but some of the leaves on the central ones as well. Now, because we're looking for a, quite a Cezanne type finish, we want some big bold colours and some quite thick brush strokes. So nothing delicate about this at all. Um, but I want to get an idea of the, the individual petals and the, the trumpets of the, of the daffodils. So I'm going to start off with quite a yellowy green. So I'm going to be mixing some of my, uh, my cadmium yellow. Let's find a space. A little bit of my cerulean. That's maybe a little bit too green, but not far off. A bit of white, because I want some quite thick, greeny paint. Maybe just a bit more yellow with that. That's about it. And I'm just going to put in some of these far petals quite thickly. And I almost want them just to be one or at the most a couple of brush strokes because I want the, the brush strokes just to really show the shape of the petals. So just putting them in one by one again, trying to keep it within the lines but not worrying too much if they're not exactly there. And then some of these petals on the, the right hand side of the central flower as well. Again, using your paint to really define these petals and just going up, up over the edge of that line if, you, if you've still got it there. What we'll probably do is come back a bit later on and we may just put some highlights on top of this greeny yellow we're putting on just to show where the yellow is just, the sun's just catching the top of the flowers. Um, but what I want is a nice contrast. So by putting this, this yellowy colour on to start with, a greeny yellow colour on to start with, we're going to get a nice contrast with the brighter yellow that we put on later on. So let's put a few more in over here with this colour. These are going to really, where we've got petals in front of them, really make those stand out because they're going to be much, much brighter than the ones in behind. So we'll just start to put a few more of those on. Just allowing your brush to follow the line of the petals and paint them in a couple of brush strokes. Just a couple here on the, the one that's going to be most in the light. Maybe just, um, just half a petal here where we're going to have a mix of different colours. It's getting a bit thin because I want it just to run on over that, that line around the outside. So now we want our next, next level up really in terms of yellow. So I don't want anything quite so green as that, but it's not going to be my brightest of yellows. So if I need a space for that. So we've got, got a yellow, just a little touch of this green just to knock the, the brightness off it. 
and a bit of white as well. A bit more of that green. Then we're going to go for our sort of a what I'm going to call my sort of mid-range yellow petals. So these are the ones that aren't aren't necessarily the brightest we're going to have, but but getting that way. And you can just see already by having that green in behind how much these petals stand out in front. That one looks like it needs to be a bit wider than the line I've drawn, so pop that in there. So we'll just start to add a few more of these in. A lovely thick paint just really moulding the flowers as you go along. Just to cover a bit more of the outside line there. And then some here perhaps. This is one where I put half green, half the brighter yellow just to give an idea of that sun catching part of the petal coming in from the left hand side. We're going to do the same on some of these over here just to give them a bit of contrast. And then we've got some, these have been a bit, bit lost by the earlier painting but I might just let some of that paint run out into the blue, I quite like that effect. Bit more yellow, a bit more white. Another one in behind there, and again you can see that contrast of the take that one a bit further, the green and the yellow. Um, right, and I might just because I've got this yellow, it's not quite my brightest. I might use this for the trumpet of this flower over here. Now, looking at my my daffodil, that trumpet's not quite in the right place. I just need to to raise that up a bit. I just want to use two or three brush strokes to, to pop that in. I'm going to come back with some of my background colour later on just to tidy that up. It's not quite as it should be. Maybe just add a little tiny bit of cadmium red to that just to give it a bit of warmth, more of a, slightly more of an orangey colour. Trumpets tend to be a bit, bit brighter sometimes, a bit more of an orangey colour, so I'll just pop that in there like that. Um, and then I'm just going to pop put in some um, some of the rest of the f petals I think so I need a, a my brightest yellow I think for the the last petals so really we want some some of the cad yellow and just some white and really get some nice nice bright yellow like the sun's really really hitting these so see we're only going in for three different Three different yellows, so blocks of colour rather than gradations, just to give quite a distinctive picture to this, or quite a distinctive design to this picture. Get the right one. Pop a bit in some of these. I'm going to use this for the trumpet on this one as well. And again, I just want to use, use a two or three brush strokes to give an idea of that trumpet coming out. Really nice thick paint rather than lots of detail going on at this stage. So for the centre of the flowers, I want more of a, an orangey colour. I'm going to come back and finish the flowers off in a few minutes, but I want to, to mix a little bit more of the this cad red with the yellow and just a little bit of raw sienna and you'll see why a bit later on. I'm just going to put a, a bit of a mark in at the top. These, these are the, the tops of the flowers, the bits are mainly in, in shadow so we're just going to put a little, little sort of orangey yellow mark on there to start with. Uh, now the next bit I'm going to do with the flowers, I'm not going to finish them off quite yet, I'm just going to put in some of the stalks. Um, so I'm going to use a thinner brush and we're going to be using the same sort of mix so we've got this um, cerulean with some yellow, so I'm not using any mixed up green. I'm just going to just almost just draw these on within the, the green line. So this is like a mid green really. Um, I'm going to come back later and we're going to add some some highlights and some shadows to this. But I just want to get an idea of where this, where these leaves are, where the stalks are. Just see how the picture's working before I come back and, and finish it off. So I'm 
trying to be relatively careful and get in between the, the lines, but as I said earlier, some of these are going to have to be painted back in. So we'll just, um, we'll just go as careful as we can and then come back and tidy up the picture at the end. Last few stalks and leaves to go in. Let's have a bit more of my green, so cerulean and cad yellow. Getting this stalk for the tall one, it's gone over the edge a bit there, never mind. Put it in behind the leaves, behind the petals, sorry. Right, nice stalk. Right, it's got a way to go yet, but that's most of the picture, most of the structure of the picture, most of the colour fitted in. So that's the end of that stage, and then we'll come back and start to look at finishing off the flowers and putting a bit more of the, the detail and um, uh, some of the emphasis to it to really make it sing. For the next stage of the picture, I want to finish the jug off and also the espresso cup, get those bits of the painting tidied up, and then we'll come back and give the daffodils and the uh, stalks a final go and then have a review of the whole picture and see how it's working and what else needs to be done. So for the jug, um, I'm looking at it, it looks a little bit flat so I want to increase some of the highlights, um, just to give a bit more detail to it, perhaps increase the shadow areas so it's got a more rounded shape um, and put back some of the lines that we've lost around the edge of it to give that real sort of Cezanne look to the, to the, to the jug. So we're going to start off with the lighter areas. <clears throat> so that was a mix of um, of raw sienna with a little bit of cad red and some white to give the give, give the areas of uh, of lightest bit the uh, that nice sort of terracotta feel to it. So I'm just going to mix up those colours again. Find a space to do that, and I want a quite a, a light colour really, just to to show that the light falling on that nice round, nice rounded jug. It's probably a little bit light, so a bit more raw sienna. Perhaps a little bit more of my cad red. And I'm just, like, like we did before, really just trying to, a little bit more white perhaps. Following, following the line of the jug round and just give a bit of a highlight where the, where the light's falling on that rounded surface to it. I quite like the brush strokes are breaking up a bit so they're not too neat, it's not too neat a jug. It's got that sort of rough, rough surface to it. So just, just emphasizing a little bit those the highlights, the, the light falling on the side of the jug. Yeah, I think that's probably just about enough. Blend that a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna just um, also go back in with some some dark shadow areas for the uh, for the, um, the the right hand side of the jug just to highlight those a bit more. Actually, before I do so, when I've got this colour, I might just give a bit bit of light to to the handle as well because obviously the the light's falling on that side of it, and we're going to put a bit of bit of shadow underneath as well in a minute. So we'll just get that on there to start it off. For the shadow area, we're going to be using some uh, burnt umber, and I'm going to add a little bit of the cad red to that again as well, just to to give that nice um, ready brown finish to it. I'm going to try and get that a little bit darker than it was previously, just to really get that rounded look to the jug. So 
So starting with our darkest colour on the site furthest away from the light. Again, trying to avoid the top of the cap. And then just almost just blending that back across. Try and get a, quite a straight line there. Blending that back in with the, the colour of the of the rest of the jug as the paint runs off the off the brush. And well I've got this dark colour, I'm just going to put a bit of shadow area underneath the, this rim, in particular as we go a bit further around, so the light's falling on up from above, above and on the left, so just want a bit of shadow where we've got this nice painted or glaze, I guess it is, rim to the jug. Again, just to give a bit of shape to the, that jug. Um, and maybe just a bit more up here, just to give a bit more shape to it. Just use a thinner brush just to model the jug if you need to. And I'm just gonna use some of that, um, that color just to put some, some shadow underneath this side of the, of the handle to the jug. Give that a bit more definition as it comes round. Something on those lines. Right, that's looking a bit better. Uh, what I might do as well is I've got this colour, is I might just add a little bit of um, the French ultramarine to it. So going back to the colour we had for the original lines around the picture to start with, uh, I'm just going to reintroduce some of those where they've been lost a little bit. Not, not thickly, just a bit patchy almost. So just dragging the brush perhaps across some of the paint I've just put on. There's a quite a nice line coming down here. Just gonna reintroduce that a bit where we've got that bottom of the jug. A little bit more there on the handle. Just to give this quite characteristic look to the picture. Put that under there a bit more. You're not going to see it too much on this right hand side, but we'll just put a little bit in there. Perhaps on this top rim, quite a stronger line there. Blending that in with the bottom of the, the leaves. We've got that darkness at the bottom of the leaves where they're planted in the jug. I've got my small brush out, I'm just going to put a bit more um, uh, emphasis on this and, and a bit more moulding to the, um, the glazed rim around the jug. So if you remember that was a bit of, bit of white with a bit of smaller amount of raw sienna, that looks like where it was. Got that nice creamy colour. I just want to, let's just find out how light that is. Uh, if it's a Bit lighter, perhaps. I just want to put a bit of bit of light catching on the top of this area, so you can just see it. It's that sort of that glazed finish, just running that round the top, just a little bit there. Just a little bit of this handle coming up as well. Now I'm going to darken that down a bit more of the raw sienna. I just want to give a bit more definition to this side of it because it's looking a bit slightly rough. Maybe a bit more of the raw sienna, that's looking a bit white. We just want to try and see if we can get this spate coming up like that. There we are. And I've got this colour, I just need to put a little bit on the other side, so there's little gaps you can see, see through the, the daffodil leaves and then just round the top there. That's just going to help us get an idea of this lip of the jug, but without putting, without putting too much detail on there. Just an idea that's rounded round to the lip. And I might just put a bit more raw sienna in just to slightly darken it down underneath. 
the more of a browny cream colour as we come around here, just to again emphasise this side of the jug being away from the main light. Right, that's probably about it for the jug at the moment. We can always come back and tidy that up later. So let's have a look at the cup. That's the next thing I want to, want to have a look at. So we've got the basic shape of it. The, the ellipse at the top isn't quite right at the moment, so we need to have a look at that. Um, I want to introduce a bit more colour to that to make it stand out a bit more. And obviously some of the shadows aren't working at the moment, so they need a bit of tidying up as well. So um, let's start with... Um, Start with the inside of it, uh, let's get that shape a bit better. So we, we've got this colour we've been using already, this sort of creamy white. And this cup's actually got a quite a bright inside, but it needs a bit more, a bit of correction to its shape. I think that's probably a bit better. And then on the, the left hand side, it's, it's obviously got some shadow coming in where the, where the light's falling on it. And we're just going to pop in the top of this cup, so this is going to help it stand out a bit more. So it's got a sort of creamy, creamy top to the the rim of the of the cup. So we're just going to try and introduce that a bit. And the light's falling on top of that. Something along those lines. Okay, right, let's go back with our cerulean. So I want to, to use some lighter cerulean um, than we've had on there before, just to give a bit more, bit more emphasis of the, of the light falling onto the, the cup and the, the brighter, brighter left-hand side of that. I just want to almost just drag this paint across. So as the paint runs out, it's just going to, you just see it there, it's going to run out as it goes from left to right, and as it runs out into the shadow areas, you get this nice idea of the cup being being rounded. Then we've got this bit underneath where there's a bit of a, a rim, so I'm just going to make that very slightly, very slightly darker, so a bit less paint on there, just to get the idea of this this cup having a nice sort of round shape, which is what we're looking to achieve. That's probably about right, and I want to do the same with the saucer. So uh, the saucer, I want to use the same sort of colour and, and really sort of mould the, uh, the shape of the saucer. So using the brush almost just to follow the, the line of the saucer around. So both ways from here, with the brightest bit on the left hand side as the saucer curves round and then just following the line a bit round and just almost the paint just running out as it goes, goes round the corner. If you look at some of Cezanne's plates, he does this to quite good effect on um, where he's got perhaps an enamel plate. Uh, and he paints them a darker colour first and then just adds some, adds some light to that later on. So that's, that's almost there. I'm just going to add a little bit of, um, bit of the, the lining again around the outside. Um, I might need to just put some of, the, um, some of this brown on, I think, because the, the jug doesn't come quite down to it. So I'm just going to find a something roughly right for this, that's a bit too right for this um, jug colour. I just want to fill in this area at the bottom here that's not quite not quite meeting up with the, the line around it and then that was a, our darker colour wasn't it so we'll just find a bit of darker shading there. And again, I just want to, to use the, some of this colour we've got here just to, just to pop the, uh, the lines in around the outside of this cup and saucer a bit more. Again, not looking to have a really strong, bold line, but just introduce it a little bit where it's, it's got covered up with paint. It's a nice sort of line under there I want to put back in again. And I don't really want to at the top where I've got that nice cream line because I want that to stand out on its own. And just a little bit at the back, maybe. So the last thing I want to do at this stage is just have a look at some of the shadows. So um, I think we'd probably use a bit of uh, burnt amber with a little bit of 
um, French Ultramarine, just to put these shadows back in again, tidy them up a bit. So a bit of burnt umber. Got it down here already with a bit of French Ultramarine. And we're just going to tidy up some of these shadow areas. I'm going to go back in with a tablecloth, I think, because it doesn't quite work quite right with this. It needs to have a bit less shading under here, I think. And I'll pop a bit in here as well. What else I need to do? Just put a bit of a bit more blue on that handle so you can see it against the shadow. Right, the last thing I'm going to do at this stage, uh, I think I may have said that a minute ago, but the very, very last thing I'm going to do now is just to have a look at this tablecloth. Um, I just want to put another layer of colour on that. So we're going to go back in with some, we've got a sort of bluey white now, and I want to introduce more of a creamy white. So again, we've got this colour down here, with a little bit of raw sienna in there. And I want to continue this, this theme of the tablecloth being quite, um, quite rough and ready, not really ironed and laid down but almost a bit ruched up around around the the jug and the and the and the cup and saucer so we're just gonna again put some quite bold marks on there with a quite a thick brush and I want to, to really just sort of almost follow the shape of the, the cup and saucer and the jug round with my picture. Um, just just really sort of putting the eye towards it towards what I want people to look at. So the focal point just wrapping it around a bit, but some big, big, bold brush strokes. Not worrying about smoothing them in. Get that nice sort of creamy colour. Just up against the shadow we've got there. And I might just tidy up some of this shadow here. That's looking a bit too... Not quite right there, so we'll just pop that in. And I've just noticed we've not got a line around the outside of the table, so we'll just look to pop that in as well. Just to keep the, the style of the picture the same all the way through. Right, next to finish off the flowers. The next part of the painting is going to be finishing off the flowers, or at least getting them almost finished. So before I do so, there's a little bit, a couple of areas of background that I need to fill in. Um, one where I've missed them to start with, and two where we've got the um, the right hand tulip, uh, daffodil trumpet, even that's uh, not quite in the right position. So I just want to tidy up those bits of background. So. Um, I think I might just have to use a small brush for those bits between the leaves and see if I can use some of that colour we initially used for the, the background. I've got a little bit thick but I think that's okay. So I'm just going to paint that in fairly carefully in between the, the leaves and the stalks. So that's maybe a bit lighter than the blue around it so we'll just go back in with a bit of more French Ultramarine. And the same here, we just pop that line in. I'm going to go over the leaves a little bit with this, but that's okay, we can tidy it up later. And then we've got this um, area, area around the trumpet here where the original drawing wasn't quite right, so I'm just going to... If you remember, we had um, some French ultramarine, a little bit of raw sienna to get that background colour. I'm just going to start to pop that in. It looks like it's a little bit darker, so we'll just lighten it up a bit. And if you if you need to do something like this, obviously the trick to do is to go in round the outline you need to, but then um, get the colour about right, but then just blend it in. Because we've got this fairly rough area of background around, you can just blend in what you've got, the colour you've got with some of the other paint around, and 
and before, before too long you won't even know it. So if you put a bit of, a bit of lighter blue in there, we can get, keep that distressed look and we'll have lost the, the change we've made. Now while I've got this I'm just noticing there's a little couple of bits of this wall that I want to fill in where they go down to the next to the table so just do that. Again trying to keep that vertical emphasis so even if you have to paint it in differently just use the brush some brush strokes afterwards just to to give that vertical emphasis and you can add a few more different bits of different colours in at this stage just to really create that distressed wall look that we're looking for. Right, so let's tidy up those couple of bits. So I'm going to go back to my daffodils. Now, looking at them, I think they're a little bit too bright in terms of yellow. So I'm going to add a bit of, um, bit of cadmium red just to, just to give a tiny bit more of an orange colour to them. Maybe not quite that much, but we'll find find a colour we like. A little bit of white. Um, and just on some of the brighter brighter leaves, I just want to get a bit of a bit more of an orange, orangey yellow colour, a bit more of a true daffodil colour. I think they're looking a bit a bit green in terms of the yellow. So just gonna go back in on over some of the leaves. This trumpet's a bit the same I could do with that being just a bit more of an orangey yellow and again just using some big bold brush strokes just to sweep those flowers in rather than fiddling around too much and then I'm just going to tidy up that that line around the outside later on when we finish the painting. Just an idea of the shape of the trumpet there and then I'm going to use use some of this slightly more orangey colour, orangey yellow just to to go back in on some of these some of these petals. So just by adding a little bit of cad red to our yellow, we've just brightened those daffodils up a little bit. Perhaps a bit more of a natural daffodil colour. And again, like we did earlier, just in a few places, maybe just part of the part of the leaf, part of the petal, sorry, just catching catching a bit of the light. Remembering our lights coming from the left hand side. Maybe just a couple of little highlights up here. A bit on there maybe. And this is looking a bit flat as well, so um, I'm just going to give that more of a more of a orangey colour, just to add a bit of interest to this side of the picture and the, that trumpet coming forward. Um, and now I've got that colour. I'm just going to go one step further. Just maybe just slightly lighter as well, just add a couple of little final highlights. Again, just following those petals around. Those need to be a little bit thicker, I think. Okay, now we need to do those, those middle bits of the daffs, uh, the trumpet bits. And the ones coming forward, I think, are going to be the most tricky bits of the painting probably to do. So I'm going to start off with the one at the back. I'm going to use some of this nice yellowy, slightly with a tinge of red colour we've got. And I'm just going to do some, make some marks to give an idea of the, the trumpet coming towards me. So the trumpet's obviously got a sort of some quite rough edges to it. They're not smooth. So just going to pop those in. OK, 
get an idea of the flower coming towards you. Um, I might just make that a little bit more, more of a ready colour so you can just see where it's slightly further away. And the same with this one. That's where it's nice, you've got that nice darker green on your right hand side. And this trumpet is looking a bit down, so it's as in not very sad, but it's looking in a downward direction. So we need to have more of it at the bottom than at the top. And I'm going to emphasize that with some of that color we use for the inside in a minute. So they're, they're roughly right. So we've got this nice orangey middle to them and I'm going to mix up some more of that orangey colour, not quite as bright. And I'm just going to pull this forward as if the, the front of the flower, the trumpet's coming towards me. And a little bit on this one as well. Let's make that just very slightly redder. Okay, they're nearly there. I just need to, I think what I need to do with those is just to brighten up some of the yellow on the, the closer one, closest trumpet. So down on this side. So it's slightly different from the colours behind it. Yeah, that's a bit better. And then what I'm going to do is, on that, that particular flower, I'm just going to put in a bit more of our greeny colour. So a yellowy green, let's see if I can mix one up. Just on this, underneath here, just to, so this bit of the trumpet stands out a bit more. So we'll just make this this petal a bit more of the greeny colour we had to start with. And you see there immediately that that trumpet starts to stand out a bit more. Right. Well, I've got this colour. There's just a couple of bits, areas here. I just want to tidy up some of these petals. And then this, this area here where the flowers connect into the top of the stem, just pop that in, which you missed earlier. Right, so the flower is almost there. I need a bit of a tidy up at the end, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. So I'm going to do the next stage with the leaves. Now the leaves, I want to, I've got the basic colour down, but I want them to be uh, darker where they're in shadow. So where, where that's underneath the, um, the, the, the flower itself and towards the bottom, and then lighter where the sun's hitting them. So... We're going to go in with a darker colour to start with, so we're going to have a bit of French ultramarine, a bit, um, bit of yellow, or cadmium yellow, just to mix up a, a darker green. And I'm just going to use that for some of the areas that are going to, be, going to be in shadow, maybe a bit more blue. I want this to be quite dark, so it's a nice sort of shadow area area. And we're just going to pop that over the colour we've got already. And you can see again that just helps pick out some of the brighter parts of the flower on the picture. Where's my green just there? So we're just going to go in areas like this. Just get those darker areas painted in. And if we just think again about the, the light coming from the, the right hand side, at uh, the left hand side, sorry, um, we're going to have a few shadows on some of these leaves. So we're going to pop those in again with this sort of bluey green mixture we've got. Some will be shaded by different stalks falling between them and the light. So just going to put a bit of interest in here. This one, 
as it's down towards the base. Make sure that's all filled in. And again, I'm going to go the other way now. So I'm going to put some uh, some highlights on where the where the light's actually falling uh, more brightly on some of these stalks and stems. So we're going to have a much more of a yellowy green. Maybe add a little bit of white to that. Let's see how that works. And then we're just going to find some areas where, where the light's just catching, catching these, these leaves and stalks. And again, just quite a, a sweeping brush stroke just to give an idea of the, the light catching them. I don't want to cover up every bit of my original green. Just a few bits to emphasise the light falling down from the left hand side towards some of the flowers. So the last thing I want to do with the flowers, other than a final tidy up perhaps, is just to reintroduce some of these lines around the flowers and the stalks where they've been lost. So we're going to go back in with our French Ultramarine and our Burnt Umber. And I might just add a little tiny bit of my medium. It's what I've been washing my brushes in, but it's not too dirty and because we're having a nice dark colour, it's not gonna matter too much. So I just wanna uh, find some of these lines that we've lost previously. Again, not putting every single one in, but really just sort of getting this idea of the, the outline that's typical of some of Suzanne's picture that we're looking to, to achieve from this picture. There's my colour down there. Thicker in others and thinner in some places. And just using that, that sort of fairly thinnish paint just to remark some of those lines that we started off with at the start of the painting. This one over here in particular, the, the right hand side daffodil, it's lost some of its shape because I had to correct that. So we'll just go in with some darker colour there. And it needs to be a bit thicker, I think, just to get that, get that in. And we had these flowers obviously got a slightly serrated edge to them on their trumpet. So we'll just give an idea of that. I'll put some of these petals back in again. Again over here, need some of these lines could do with going back in. I'm just going to do the same on some of the stalks and the and the and the, uh, the leaves. So a little bit more of our burnt amber, a bit more of our French ultramarine. Just thin that tiny amount. I'm just going to do the same for these these leaves. Again, I don't need to fill every last line in. Just get an idea as to where some of those lines were to start with. Maybe slightly more on the shadow side, if you want to. And 
And again, we don't need to do every single line, just pop some of them back in. Let's finish off with this one. Right, the next stage is just have a look at our picture and work out what we think needs to be done to finish it off. For this last section of the painting, I've just tweaked the camera settings slightly. I think some of the, um, the, the yellows are looking a bit burnt out, a bit bright on the daffodils, so you can hopefully see where we are in terms of the, the colours as, they, as they're working. So as, this is the time just to look at your picture and work out what you need to do to finish it off. Now, there's a few bits I'd like to do. I think I want to introduce a bit more of this distressed feel to the back wall. Just tidy up some of the flowers a little bit, maybe get some more emphasis on the trumpets, um, a bit more to the ruffled tablecloth, and just generally have a fiddle around just to spend five minutes finishing the painting off. So we're going to start with this background. So we've got this, um, this background which is our um, French ultramarine with a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of white, and I'm just going to introduce a few, few more brush marks just to really get this idea of this old wall that's got the plaster coming off maybe and not in great shape. And just leaving some quite big bold brush strokes on there. I don't want the wall to distract from the overall picture but I just want to, people to look at it and, and understand perhaps what, what we're trying to do with this background. Again just trying to avoid going over some of the lines we've got already. Perhaps a little bit more of the raw sienna. Put that in. A bit more of the ultramarine, just to just to really sort of get the feel of this wall. Okay, right, um, let's have a look. I think the jug, I just want to maybe just have a, one more highlight on that rim of the jug where the light's hitting it. So just a bit of quite almost white, but just knock back a little bit and brush isn't very clean. Just following this, this top round just a little bit like that. Nothing too distinctive, too bright. Top of the top of the handle. I'm going to do the same with the cup. I just want that to be slightly lighter. Where we've got this light falling on the rim of the cup. That's going to stand out nicely against the the pot behind it, the uh, the jug behind it. And again, just by letting the the paint come off the brush as you go through. You get the idea of the light being brightest on the left hand side and fading away. And maybe just a little bit more, a little bit more at the back of the cup there where the, the light's hitting it, so a bit more of the a bit more of our white. Just with a little touch of raw sienna. There we are. Um, when I'm looking at this, I think that my shadow is a little bit too dark, so I'm not very happy with that. So um, I want to look at making a mix up to adjust that. So we're going to go go again with our burnt amber, find a little space for this with the French ultramarine. I'm just going to put a little bit of white with that just to to lighten up a bit more of the blue, a bit more of the uh, burnt amber. Let's go in with a slightly lighter area of shadow. I think that shadow we've got is a bit too dark. I'll go quite carefully around that handle, which is going to stand out a bit more. I'm going to do, use the same for underneath this cup, where again, I think that's just a a little bit too dark for me with this painting. 
maybe even a bit lighter on the back there. Right, with this tablecloth, I'm just going to put a final layer of even thicker creamy white paint on just to get that, uh, get that ruffled look. So just uh, go back to my thickest brush. It's my number six flat brush. So we're going to find a bit of white up here. Tiny touch of raw sienna just to take the edge off that. And I want some quite sort of quite thick brush strokes. Again, trying like we did before, just to to follow the line of this tablecloth around the around the jug and the cup that we've got there. Put some quite big, bold, distinctive marks. Maybe one there, just right against the edge of the of the jug. one on the far side just next to that boundary line we've got between the between the tablecloth and the wall. The last bit of the painting I want to get done is just to tidy up the daffodils. Um, there's just a few things on them I'd like to uh, enhance, brighten up a bit and maybe give them a bit more definition. So starting with the left hand one I think that the, the colour of that is a little bit um, one dimensional, so I'd like to add a little bit of the more orange yellow to the bottom of it uh, and also um, perhaps put the outline back in a bit uh, and then probably do a similar thing for the other, other daffodils as well, just to, just to tidy, up their, tidy up their flower heads and really make them look impressive. So we're going to start with the left hand one. So, so we're going to introduce a little bit more of the orangey colour to this, this, um, this daffodil, maybe not quite that orange. I want the sort of underside of it to be a bit more of that colour. So again, some quite thick singular brush strokes on top of the colour I've got there already. That's just going on top of that yellow. And maybe slightly less bright there. Just to give a bit of a bit of variety to that one. And I might just introduce a bit more of the yellow, so I'll find a bit of yellow there. Just to the, the, the top of this one as well, just to, along here. And maybe also in this, this petal where the light's catching it, perhaps a little bit, bit lower down where the light's catching that separate from the shadow of the flower itself. Next thing I want to do is just tidy up that, some of the lines around that flower. So. Um, going back to the colour we had before, a bit of burnt amber, a bit of French ultramarine, a little bit of my medium, my minerals thinner there. Just going to go around the edge a little bit. Just to pop this, this borderline back in again. Have to find these flowers against the background. Again, not thickly and not uniformly across the whole picture. be a little bit too thick, let's just take a bit of that out again. There we are. Okay, right, on to the next one. So the next staff of the cross, um, I really want to enhance this, um, this trumpet coming forward, so I'm just going to put a bit of slightly brighter yellow where they're really catching the light. And I'm going to go the opposite way with some slightly 
darker orange, maybe just a little touch of raw sienna, just for the inside of the trumpet. There we are, and just bring that forward a little bit. And I, as I've got that cut on, I'm just going to pop it in there as well. Drag that forward like it's coming out towards you, where that trumpet's poking down a little bit. And then on this, these two flowers actually, I'm just going to add back a little bit of the, the outline that's lost previously. Again, not too, too exactly, too precisely. And I'm just going to put a little bit round, round some of the trumpet just to help pick that out a bit, particularly on that sort of shadow side. Just a little bit there. And the same with this one. And that one just needs a little bit more of that brighter yellow, I think, just on the front. Some of these parts of the trumpet that are coming forward. Just pop a few bits on here as well while we're looking at it. I think that one's probably about done now. Uh, so the right hand one, again, I'm just going to add a little bit of orangey colour, orangey yellow, just to the, the bottom of the trumpet coming forward, just to give that a bit of definition and distinction from the, the lighter area on top of it. Let's find something more orangey than that. There we are. And just, uh, just tidy up some of these petals a little bit. A little bit more of the brighter yellow in here. And I think there's one that's needed here. It looks like it's partly lost. So we'll just pop that in. Give that a slightly better shape. And just put a bit of this, this outline around it again. Right, I think that's about done for the the, um, the daffodils. Just put a bit more in here just to take out some of that outside line. And just the last thing I'm going to do is just to add a little bit more of the lighter green just to some of these leaves and stems, just where the light's catching on them a bit. Really pick that out. Not too much, just a just a little bit. We've got some highlights there already, so just a few little bits where the light's coming in and, and catching on them. Yeah, I think we're done. I think that's my daffodils with a blue espresso cup. And I hope you enjoyed that demonstration.